Welcome to the International Brendan Fraser Film Festival of North Carolina. Yay! <laughs> Everyone, let's welcome Claire. So happy to be here. <laughs> Claire is a fellow Bembridge scholar. She's been with us pretty much since the beginning. Yeah. And we felt that it was only right that she be included in this special episode of The Mummy because The Mummy is her favorite movie of Brendan Fraser's. And it's my favorite movie as well. Mm -hmm. I can tell that your mustache is really about to fall off it's because it's hanging on like for dear, dear you life. You have Botox right here. Like all that's moving is your lower <laughs> lip. <laughs> it is so itchy. Oh no. I think we should discuss what, what characters we are. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Claire, would yeah. you like to start us off? Hi, I'm Evie and I love Evie. She's adorable. It's nice to see a lady protagonist who's not, um, despite the fact that I called her a lady protagonist, um, it doesn't like patronize her as a character or condescend to her as a character and she doesn't have to like give up her intelligence to be attractive to Rick. Like at no point is she mm -hmm. taken down a notch to make that relationship work. I am Winston Havelock, who I consider to be the unsung hero of The Mummy. He just wanted a noble mission. He died with a smile on his face. I think at first when we were planning this episode, I wanted you to be Jonathan mm -hmm. and I wanted Claire to be Evie and I wanted to be Rick. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I'm kind of more of a Winston anyway. So like, <laughs> I embroidered these patches and then I bought this hat off of eBay. It's, it's broken, <laughs> but that's fine. Well, I am Benny Gabor. Benny has an iconic look. He does. Fashion icon. I feel like all these looks yes. are still <laughs> special <laughs> and strong. Can you just stand up? Because I'm sure <laughs> to see what's actually going on. I <laughs> created some suspenders. My thigh high thigh stockings. High pantyhose. I have the family rosary from 1900. Mm. I've got my crystal that I've had since I was really little. A tree, my cartouche, and my little, my little pony. pony. You've really captured the essence of Benny without looking so much like Benny that it's insulting. <laughs> so we saw this movie in 1999 in the theater. With our dad. I remember what theater we were Me at. Me too. I remember the whole thing. I remember where we were sitting in the theater. <laughs> I saw it that one time and then I was way too scared to watch it again. I was uh, 12. We weren't allowed to watch scary movies at home. Mm -hmm. We didn't have cable. A couple years later, we went on a family trip. We were in the hotel room and The Mummy was on TV. We watched it and I was just like, this is even better than I remember. So it turned into this really long road trip. Once an hour, I would be like, Whitney, I just, I just wanna watch The Mummy. It got to the point where you were like, stop talking. So that year for my birthday, Whitney bought me The Mummy special edition box set with Mummy 1 and 2 and Scorpion King, which we won't count that. It had like all these special features, like the making of, special um, effects, special effects team, ILM, shout out to ILM. George of the Jungle was my Brendan Fraser heartthrob crush moment. And I was obsessed with it when I was a kid, made my mom rent it obsessively, thinking that I was very subtle about like, I just <laughs> enjoy it as a comedy. And my mom was like, yeah, no, I'm very well aware of why we're renting this movie. <laughs> And then I was probably in my 20s before I saw The Mummy. And I think the reason I didn't see it when it came out was similar to you guys. I wasn't allowed to watch scary movies. We didn't watch a lot of action movies. So I'm a historian professionally, and I hang out with a lot of archaeologists. And a lot of my archaeologist Ooh. friends are obsessed with this movie, understandably. And I saw it in my 20s, like, oh, this is, this is delicious. And I very much enjoy it. I think this is the longest I've ever gone without watching The Mummy. That's tough. You have all of this pent up energy right now. <laughs> really like excited. I can just tell because I know you really well. I She's trying so hard to hold it in and to keep that mustache on. <laughs> I can't really like be as expressive as I want to be because this thing will just fly off. <laughs> this video might be an hour long. I'm not sure. This one's just going to be as long as it needs to be. It, this would be like cutting off my own arm. There you have it. Like giving my child away that you don't have. Right. This movie is available to watch on HBO Max. We'll have a lot to talk about. A lot. Happy Mummy. What a joyous experience that was. Every time we watch it, I always feel like 
The casting is so amazing. I can't imagine any other actors in any of these parts. It's perfection, and everybody plays their part so well. The thing I noticed about it the first time I watched it, too, was, like, how well-written it is. Like, for as many characters as it's juggling and for how many different motivations they all have, you never lose track. And and also, I never lose track of what's happening in a fight scene. You know, some movies you're like, oh, and then they're fighting whenever. But I think it's all very well paced and very well structured. I just as a movie, I think it's very well done. We're sharing one cocktail. But then you can have more. Now, I think Winston would probably say chin chin and all that rot. Chin chin and all that rot. One thing I noticed this time around was his little hand tattoo. It's very hot. I was going to say, like, for being such a small tattoo, I shouldn't be as turned on by it as I right. am. So, Whitney, as I take yes. the other side of my mustache, um, what is this movie about? In a nutshell, there is a young woman named Evelyn. She has a brother named Jonathan. They somehow come across a map of this hidden city where treasure is rumored to be. Hamanoptra. Called Hamanoptra. They embark on a journey. Evie is there because she is a librarian and she is a scholar and she she wants to be accepted into the Benbridge Scholars. She is there really for the historical significance and she knows everything about Egyptology. They need a little bit of help to get there. They find Rick O'Connell. They uh, convince him to go with them and he leads them to the Forbidden City. But they accidentally resurrect, activate, or resurrect, <laughs> reactivate a mummy. He is on a mission because he wants to resurrect his long lost love. Evie and Rick, of course, there's a love story. When it comes to history and archaeology and Egyptology, Rick is like, Evie's in charge. She knows what she's doing. And when it mm. comes to the muscle and the protection and the getting there and directions and stuff, Evie's like, Rick's in charge. This is his game. He knows what he's doing. And I think their ability to respect each other and cede that authority when they're like, this is not my wheelhouse, it's your wheelhouse. I think that is such a, a basis of trust between the two of them, which I love. I think you're I right. I think you're right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch it, it's perfect. <laughs> there were a couple times when Rick was talking sometimes to Evie, but sometimes I think to other people. And Brendan is is using the softness of the Brendan Fraser voice. Yes. And I was thinking, I don't think that the usual go-to for an like this action figure guy would be kind of a soft-spoken, mm -hmm. a little bit more sensitive vocally. I mean, again, as we've seen in so many of his films so far, <laughs> keep, just hold it. Keep going. There's such a softness there. <laughs> <laughs> and he really showed that. He absolutely <laughs> did. He looks so good, though. Just stay. It's I can't talk and do something at the same time. So you guys just, just keep this conversation going, oh my God. please. I totally noticed that thing with his voice. So I think one example I'd never noticed before today was when they're in the bar and he says, like, how's your friend doing? And he says it so tenderly. It's lovely. But I was also noticing this time, like, how much their flirtation progressed naturally. It wasn't like, oh, that's the man and the woman, and so they'll kiss at the end and it doesn't make sense. Like, this movie felt like, oh, you can kind of watch them get closer. It kind of makes sense, you know? And watch them build up respect for each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. This could be completely false, but I feel like I read somewhere that this role was actually written for Sly Stallone. Oh, really? Or someone like him, that it was supposed to be this, like, very traditional action hero. And so I just think that all the things we like about Rick O'Connell are pure Brendan. Like, I don't think anybody else in that role would have been as vulnerable or as tender or brought out that part of him. When I watch this movie, I just feel like he is Rick O'Connell. I do too. It's kind yeah. of, I kept forgetting that I was supposed to be looking at Brendan's performance as Rick because I just completely accept him and believe him as this character. I always feel so bad for that guy who gets his eyes eaten out no. and his teeth, his tongue stolen his, and everything. He, his <laughs> teeth remain. It's his tongue. No, the mummy had his teeth. No, he left his teeth. I know this is the Brennan Fraser Film Festival, but I just want to shout out Oded Fair for how hot oh Arda Bay is, who has no business being that hot. How dare. No. How dare you, sir? I was just discussing this with an, archaeolo an archaeologist friend, and he was like, you know, you watch it and you think about, like, this is the archaeology of the 1920s. This is what, isn't what we should be doing. And I was like, yeah, but this movie, you should show it in archaeology classes. Like, this is what happens 
when you don't address the cultural beliefs of the culture you're engaging with, when you don't include local gatekeepers, and when you exploit local labor. This is what happens. You bring mummies back to life. So ar archaeologists learn. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You are right. This should be shown really in every single school. I agree. agree. Not even, not only across America, but across the world. So let's start rating this. Okay. Emotional depth. Oh, this is a big one. This is a, it's a deep one. He's very subtle with the emotional depth in this. Mm -hmm. We don't see any crying, unfortunately, but I know that Rick O'Connell is a crier. Like, 100%. To totally. 100%. Mm -hmm. I think he's had to stuff down a lot of that emotion while yeah. he was going through whatever he's, time he's he had. He's seen some hell, Whitney. Yeah, mm -hmm. he really has. Yeah. And he Just, has to get through it. Blood and sand. Oh yeah, you know he's like got trauma from that. The, the man who says blood and sand is repressing some trauma. And frankly, frankly, the fact that Brendan gives a performance in which he does not cry, and yet we're all like, he cries. That man cries. That's depth. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Emotional depth of seven. Yes. Okay. Claire, yes. do you remember what the next category is? <laughs> is it ma'am count? You are right. <laughs> Bada bing. I got zero, but we'll wait for the ma'am whisperer. Elizabeth. Whisper. Yes, she'll set us straight. <laughs> Comedic performance is next. Oh, wow. There's a lot of subtleties here. What were your favorite parts? <laughs> I'd love to know. <laughs> I am on the edge of my seat. I feel like there's um, going to be so much new information. So much new <laughs> stuff that we haven't heard before. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you two have ever noticed this. Um, so my two <laughs> favorite <laughs> are uh, first descending into the tomb. Uh, as Rick is preparing the rope to go down and he keeps swinging it, and hitting the warden. It's in the background, so it's not like the focus of the scene at all, but it is there and it is funny. And the other thing is when they're they're exploring for the first time and they hear a noise and someone in the party says, what's that noise? And Rick says, sounds like bugs. And the sarcasm of the way that his voice rises on that note makes me laugh every time. Whitney, I feel like if a different actor had been cast, <laughs> it would have just, he would have overdone it completely. He would have said, bugs! Bugs! Yes! I had one off the top of my head. Okay, please, so, sure. Okay, so there's this scene. Let me paint a picture for you. He's in the tomb. He's in a pond. And he has to step over skulls. And he goes, boop, boop, boop. When Evie is about to kiss him, she passes out and he just kisses the air. Like, I, w I wonder if that was something that he put in there. Will you do it? <laughs> <laughs> this kiss looks like she's just like opening, closing. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Close again. I'm fine with a five. Okay, well, let's do five. Next mm -hmm. is best actor in a dramatic role. And can we just reiterate, what is the nomination and what is the win? Five is the nomination, 10 okay. is the win. Mm -hmm. Historically, we have kind of changed the awards <laughs> yeah. to match the movie. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, Tarzan wouldn't be nominated for <laughs> an Oscar. Tarzan. <laughs> She keeps I've doing been, this. I've been doing this all week for some reason. By Tarzan, she means George of the George Jungle. Of the jungle. <laughs> so are we taking Academy Awards out of this? You are the, the mother of this category. Thank so you. So you, you should get final say. I mean, I feel like for the actual points, mm -hmm. I feel like we should really try for Academy Awards. Okay. No, you're right. Okay. You're right. Because then I feel like if the rules are different for every single movie, then it's like, it's not consistent. As much as I don't want you to be right, I know that you are right. Thank you. You're welcome. Winston, that's so nice. This is hard. I sense that Whitney's doing a point somewhere. <laughs> I heard it. I heard the point. Yeah, I heard yeah. it. I know I shouldn't do that, but... Oh, wow. <gasps> I want him to be just under a nomination. Just, like, so... So close. All Let's right. do four. Let's do the Let's four. Let's meet in the middle. Think, I think that's a good do four. So physical prowess and stunt. I think this is probably the most stunt work that we've seen so far. No, and he far. did a lot. So Well, and especially hearing Brendan talk now about how much the Mummy movies destroyed his body. I mean, that's all I can think of when I watch this now. Exactly. Yeah. And how he almost got killed because he was actually being hanged. Yeah, they had to call an ambulance because he passed out. He gave us 
so much throughout his career, but especially for these mummy movies, mm-hmm. because he did his own stunt work. Yeah. He took it to the next level and beyond. One thing that really bugs me when people are like making fun of the way that he looks or like what the hell happened to him. It's like yeah. he gave so much of himself for your enjoyment. Yes. Give him a break. Yeah. You know? I mean, for his body to do all the stunt work three oh my times. God. I just can't, like, I don't know how he's not in a wheelchair. I know. Honestly. Honestly. Well, and especially because, like, you know that it was take after take after take. He is an actor. He is not a stuntman. No. I feel like he is really flinging himself around. Totally committed to it. Like, yeah. doing it. I mean, even in the, the combat scenes, he was doing some kicks, like, oh, type of yeah. kicks that yeah. were really high. And I thought, yeah. he must be actually pretty flexible. Yeah, like, it, didn't he talk about in an interview... In addition to all his back surgeries, hasn't he also needed to have vocal cord surgery? Yes. Because he's destroyed his voice. And I keep thinking, like, what is the, the – people always talk about what is the funniest part of the movie. It's when Rick screams back at the mummy. Screams. And I think, like, well, that's why he needs surgery, you know? Like, he, yeah. he's not giving that his all, and it winds up being the most famous part of the movie, you know? Like, not getting ahead to The Mummy 3 – but he talks about in The Mummy 3 how underneath his costume, he is, he said he has an exoskeleton of ice packs. Like that, it's, oh it's amazing. God. It makes me really sad. I know. In a way. Yeah. Me too. But also look at what he gave us. I yeah, mean, I know. it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ten. Unanimous ten. The yes. This is the, the category we've been waiting for. Hair. It's perfect. It's the perfect hair. He has some maybe really subtle highlights. Desert kissed. As you two have pointed out, his back of his hair is a problem usually, and this is perfect. It is perfect. So I know that in the George of the Jungle video, I gave it a 10. Uh-huh. And I still stand by that. But I, th- I still think I like Rick O'Connell's hair better now that I've seen oh. it again. No, mm-hmm. I like them both equally, actually. Well, they're for two very different characters. Different men that I would do different things with. But I do think it's important to point out that this mummy hair contrasted to mummy two hair, this mummy hair is better. The side part is better than the center part, and oh. I will die on this hill. Oh. <laughs> this one goes to 11. I do feel like this one should get a 10.5. Okay. Scholars, tape. we apologize for not being consistent, but... The best scholars can earn extra credit, and I think he did here. Hidden talents. Have we seen him fight like this before? Swords and... No. I don't think so. That was something that I was thinking about during the movie. Because (laughs) although it could be under physical prowess and stunts, I do feel like this is a talent because like, Mm. I can't do that. Can you? What are we talking about? (laughs) Well, There's a I've lot of tried. different weapons to balance. But it is kind of like a dance. So it I is. Could maybe do, but, but in terms of holding this heavy stuff. Oh my gosh. The, at least it looks heavy. Yeah. It's probably not as heavy. But I think we could say that his combat yeah. skills, his yeah. high kicks, I just felt high like, kicks. wow, flexibility. They're so noticeable when he's getting Evie off the like mummify table. He's like balletic. I mean, it's beautiful. Being hung by a rope. Yeah. And not dying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, d- I just, my brain turned off after you said being hung. Well, that is a hidden talent. <laughs> That's a hidden talent. The other two that I had written down were camel riding. And then I had minor surgery when he gets the scarab out of Jonathan's arm. That was a good Well, one. and he did this like flip thing the knife. With the knife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for hidden talents, then we're thinking about five. Five. Yeah, let's do five for hidden talents. Okay. Swoons. Evie has multiple parts where she's swooning. This might be breaking the rules a bit. I'm not sure. Can we count Rick? The way that he swoons over Evie for a good half of the film. He is swooning more than any woman I have seen swooning over him. It's the way that he looks at her and giving her the tool set when she's riding the camel and he's looking at her with such awe. Yeah. It's one of those, Mm -hmm. what a woman. What a woman. (laughs) So shall we bend the rules, scholars, and say that him swooning over someone can count as swoons? I like it. I I also have a headcanon that Jonathan's a little swoony for Rick. I see that. Totally. When they're getting on the boat, and Jonathan's like, yeah, nothing to like there. No, he's awful, isn't he? And I'm like, you're into him too, Jonathan. Yeah, we all know. Right. It's fine. So we're going to say three for swoons. Yeah. Temperature. Okay, now we haven't done a mashup since Still Breathing. Do we want to do one? Claire, what do you think? Oh gosh, I am in awe every week of your temperature scales. They are far more (laughs) creative and off the wall than anything I could ever come up with, so. 
but they're my favorite part, so. Zero is the moment in Somewhere in Time where Christopher Reeve pulls a penny Finds out a penny. of his pocket. Oh, God. And Jane Seymour, she, she him. starts screaming. Her voice is cracking. <laughs> Okay, so that could be zero, but I feel like we could do better. Okay, so Ardeth Bay is protecting the book that tells you how to time travel. Mm. Yes. He doesn't want people to go down this portal. Jane Seymour uh -huh. travels to Egypt. She's doing a show. She's very popular in Egypt. Well, something bad happens. <laughs> something bad always has to happen. She's wrongly accused of shoplifting. Her manager, Christopher Plummer, is he framing her for spurning his oh advances? Oh my god, yes. yes. Because Rick was at one of her performances. This is, now I just have to clarify, this is before Rick met Evie. Okay. You know, like, yeah, he's there's, not there's no on infidelity. Evie. No. He uh, waits backstage to get her autograph because little do you know, he is an autograph collector. He's got one of those <laughs> oh, books. My god. That he keeps with him at all times and just like has famous people sign them. Cool. Christopher. <laughs> Plummer gets really mad. He's in love yeah. with Jane Seymour. So Christopher hires you. Benny? Yes. Okay. Because he <laughs> just takes one look at you and he's like, he could do some damage. Mm. Part he could, of my plan. This little rat That's a nasty he can like, dude. go behind the scenes. Benny steals a sacred ruby. Oh. <laughs> He is supposed to plant the ruby on Rick O'Connell, okay? Oh, to frame him. To frame him, but he accidentally plants it on Jane Seymour. So she goes to jail. Oh, no. Well, Jane Seymour rots in prison for the rest of her life. <laughs> so that's a one. That's a one. So what's a 10? Jane Seymour spends like 10 years in prison in Cairo. She She's doesn't rot to death. <laughs> Ardith ends up rescuing her. After 10 years. <laughs> He's not great at it. He has, he has Magi duties to focus on. Rick and Evie and Ardith and Jane, they double date. They're, yes. you know, each other's kids, God's parents. It's just like a really healthy yes. friendship. I like this. I do but too. I also need a level 10 that's so hot it could kill me. It's a foursome? So, <laughs> I think it's a foursome. <laughs> I'm not like a gross drunken night of bad decisions. More like we are all responsible hot adults and let's just go for it. And they, they're they together for the rest of their lives. Expressing themselves sexually. And like Jane Seymour has Rick's kids. She's got right. Artith's kids. Evie has some children with Artith as well, but also Rick. Our Artith figures out how to get Christopher Reeve to time travel in. That's it, he Claire. Joins. Well, that took a turn. <gasps> I'm just, you know, Rick O'Connell has set a bar for men, for for healthy masculinity, and I'm just I'm just saying it. Yeah, I know that we made ten the limit, but I do feel like he goes beyond a ten. All right, here's my reasoning for being open to pushing this up to eleven. Every single time we score any category and we like something, we always say, "But in the Mummy." So the mummy is is the goal. Oh my god, standard. Whitney! Yes, it's the That's movie. That's such a good point. By which we measure every single thing. You are so right, Benny. <laughs> so I'm just gonna write down eleven. That's well argued. I'm a rule follower. Mm, but she is. This is one rule that should be broken. Yeah. And even more reason to trust Whitney's logic. So dancing is next. Do fight scenes count as dancing? <laughs> Technically, they are choreographed. Mm -hmm. He definitely got points for this in physical prowess and stunts. True. True. But I would be okay with a two. Okay. Costumes. There aren't a lot of costumes for Rick. The uniform, the uh, costume when he's in jail, mm -hmm. then his suit that he mm -hmm. switches into, and then his like mummy outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, which I think is I think is the suit. I think it's the suit he just takes the coat off. Although there's not a huge variety, I f I love love. Love these costumes. These are some of my favorites mm -hmm. of any movie that Me too. I have seen 100%. that he's yeah. been in. There's like a leather wrist cuff that oh, he I wears. Oh, I love the leather cuff. So <laughs> hot. Yeah. And then the leather gun holster that he wears. Love that as it's well. Ob it's obscenely hot, and I don't know why. And he has the leather boots. And they're beautiful boots. I even love the shade of khaki that he wears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super nice. It. Oh, and there's there are a couple scenes where he's got like that scarf. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know that I literally wrote down under costume. I literally wrote down scarf on camel. 
<laughs> like I wanted to discuss the scarf. Yes. Yeah, the costumes fit really well. I think the colors, those earth tones, are really flattering on they him. They are. Love the pants are how perfect. They him. Oh my god. The pants, the pants are pants perfect. Are really good. Yeah. Love those pants for sure. Oh, I I went eight just for lack of variety, but I'm fine with a ten because they're so hot. <laughs> ten. Okay, let's let's do, ten. do ten. Can we talk about one thing that we have not talked Absolutely. about? Absolutely. And I just I cannot leave this conversation without talking about Please. it. Can we talk about the nose boop? <gasps> yes. Oh my god, I oh loved god. it. That's just like another level of tenderness. I know, and that what? was. One what of those things. action hero character does a nose boop? Okay, that was really significant to me. Thank you for saying that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I just, I couldn't not say it. It's mm. so important. Okay, and we also need to come up with our note. Just drop me into this movie. Fly us in, Winston. Amen. <laughs> you gonna fly us in? I will. I'd be honored. That is an honorable mission. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> just don't crash. So the total is 67 and a half. Next week, Dizzy and Whitney will be watching Dudley Do-Right from 1999. Claire, we are so happy that you joined us today. This is so much fun. This was so much fun. Thank you for having me. We will see everyone next Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Claire, thank you so much. Keep it scholarly. Bye.